Hello everyone and welcome to Property Technical, where we discuss about properties and how you can benefit. Today we will be discussing Project Alpha. Project Alpha is now complete and we will be discussing in this video from where we started at demolition point till it's finished. And in the next video we will see the finished product. So this video is going to be an exciting topic to talk about as we go step by step of the build process. So stay tuned. So let us first start with the demolition. Uh, we have discussed demolition and land clearing in more details in another video. As you may have already guessed, there was a old house that needed to be demolished in order for us to clear the space for the new build. So next step we saw the uh, land was cleared out and they also fixed up some levels uh, for the build process to start. Following that, they did the piers. Now these piers are as per the engineering specifications. On top of that, the slab goes. So we have discussed the process of pouring the slab in more details in another video, the links should show up here. The slab itself is a waffle pod type slab. It's a particular way of engineering the slab. If you're interested to know more details about it, uh, I do recommend you check out that video. So next thing that happened was that the slab was allowed to rest for about 14 days. The builder would come every now and then and sprinkle water on it. That's a recommended step. And then the brickwork started. They started with what's called the party wall. Uh, it doesn't stand for party. Uh, uh, the party wall as in it divides the property in two halves. This would be the very wall where the division line will be drawn. So the next step, the carpentry begins where they do the framework for the internal walls and the uh, structures for the windows and doors and things like that. Also the joists for the upper level is also done in this step. So once we have the tongue and groove boards down for the upper level, next thing that my builder does, it's an optional step, is that he puts down a layer of waterproofing. What it does is, as the build is progressing, it might rain or in a winter stay, it might have uh, dew in the morning and things, so that there isn't any moisture damage, this waterproofing layer comes in handy. Once, as the build is progressing, we put down the floor coverings and things like that, the waterproofing layer remains underneath. So it remains a moisture barrier for pretty much forever. And it's an added benefit for people who will be living there. They might not know about it, but it's a good thing that they have a layer of waterproofing under the floorboards. The bathrooms and things like that, they get a different coat of waterproofing. That is to comply with mandatory regulations. So this particular step only involves the tongue and groove floorboards. And then after that, the uh, carpentry work resumes on top of that. So once the roof structure is made, the roofing people, they come in and they put down a layer of sarking and some battens for the roof tiles to go on. While that is happening, the plumber, the electrician, they come in and they start doing the rough-in. So once the roofing and the rough-in is done, the jeep rockers they come in. Um, in other parts of the world you might uh, refer to this as the sheet rock. Uh, in Australia we call it jeep rock. As in photocopier in other places they call it Xerox. We call jeep rock because that's a brand. Anyhow, moving forward, while the uh, jeep rocking is going on, we go shopping. And that's a fun bit that I have discussed in another video about fun parts of building. Shopping is always fun where we look for tiles and fittings and or the kind of stone that will go on the bench top, or the stove, or the sink, uh, the kind of kitchen cabinets would go in, all that. So uh, quite a lot of fun doing all that, uh, especially for those who are shopaholic amongst us will uh, relish this stage of the build. So while the internal work is going on, um, the facade is also given its features. Some work is done by the carpenters, others are done by the painters. They work uh, in tandem according to uh, the builder's instructions. Next. As mentioned earlier, a licensed waterproofing tradesperson, they come in and they do the waterproofing. And this is a important step as it is inspected by the certifier and also a certificate is given. Past that, the screed bed 
is put down for uh, tiling to begin. So this needs to dry for another two days or so once it's uh, put down and then the tiling begins. Once the tiling portion begins and, and it's done, the house is quite near completion. You can see the shape taking place. In this particular build, uh, we selected quite large format tiles for the bathroom. It makes it look unique. These are very large tiles at uh, 1.2 meter by uh, 600 millimeters, but they are quite hard to lay as well. Uh, it's an interesting thing. I believe in this particular suburb, this is the only one of its kind. And the end result is quite nice actually, in my opinion. It looks quite seamless and minimalistic. Once the painter and the carpenters are done, with what they need to do with the facade, the last of the scaffoldings come down. And that's when we are able to see the facade for what it will look like when finished. Once the scaffolding goes away, uh, the doors and windows are all fitted. As you can see in this picture, the garage door is installed. So we opted for a uh, metal and wood combo for the garage door. Um, it's more contemporary thing to do. Um, we selected cedar for the uh, inserts. And at this stage in the inside, we have the kitchen deliveries and things like that. So they, those are getting fitted and also the fittings in the bathroom and things like that because the tiling is finished. And at the same time, the other finishing items such as aircon and uh, the balustrades and things like that, they start going in. Another good thing that my builder does is once the floorboards, they go down on the uh, upper level, he puts down plastic sheets. So this prevents um, damages from happening on the floorboards and in the outside, the new driveways they go in, the um, landscaping is also uh, progressing. They put down more topsoil for plants and grass to be level with the driveway. So once all the electrical work is done, they turn on the power obviously, and that turns on all the lights and things like that, and the house begins to sparkle. This is one of those stages that I really look forward to because you can feel the project is nearing its end, and the house really looks beautiful with its own lights on. So next, once all the uh, landscaping work is done and also the inside work is done, the, the cleaners, they come in and there's a lot to clean. Everything is dirty and dusty, uh, including the driveways. So they pressure wash the driveway and the inside. They go with days of um, cleaning. So no matter how much precaution is taken during the build process, there's still going to be, you know, paint splatters here or there or uh, other items to clean, um, dust and dirt and things like that. So professional cleaners, they take a few days to clean everything and bring it to sparkling uh, tip-top condition. So once the cleanup is done, we go in and uh, make a list of things that we see. Uh, these things are usually minor touch-ups here and there or a little bit of this, little bit of that. And the builder takes those into account and you know they will send appropriate tradespeople to finish those up. So these are part of the last handover activity. The outside grass and things like that, everything is redone until everything is clean and presentable. Pro tip, try and avoid doing an open house without furnishing. Staging is not too expensive given the amount we have already spent in building the house. It's a fraction of the cost and when the buyers they come in they look at the house with the furnitures. The people who do the staging they are professionals. They know which size furniture to use and where and uh, what orientation would work best. So when the buyers they come in they see what their lifestyle will be like when they purchase the house. If it was left empty, we are leaving a lot to the imagination of the buyer and that's when they will uh, look at things and, hey, something could have been different like that, something could have been different like this, as opposed to actually looking at how they could be living there. So the idea is to make them fall in love with where they are going to be living, as opposed to just another brick and mortar place that they might consider buying. So that is all I had to say about the construction process and it is now fully finished. So in the next video, I will be doing a walkthrough, giving you a tour of the full house, um, showing you the details of the fit and finishes. Uh, so make sure to tune in. And of course, if you have any questions in relation to this build or about properties in general, by all means, leave a note in the comment section below. I read each one of them and I endeavor to answer them as soon as I can. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, you take care of yourself.